Doc Ham. Bonjour, bonsoir, we say bonsoir. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, bonsoir. We've got, uh, we are live on, I think we live, we live, we are live on uh, Facebook and we are live on Instagram, uh, live with Manu. Uh, the sauce by Manu is what we're talking about tonight. Again, we've got a beautiful recipe. We are not, <laughs> thank you, my darling. We, we're not at La Botanique, where I usually shoot uh, all my cooking uh, demonstrations. We are in my house. We are, we, we are renting La Botanique tonight for something very special, with delicious. Uh, so we decided to do this at home tonight. So I'm going to wait for a few more minutes to get more traction. Uh, last time I was doing this, it was a little bit boring, so it would be nice if more of you watch. You know, just, I'm just saying, you know. I'm Jump on and ask some questions, guys. Yeah, yeah. just ask some questions. Uh, we've got, uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the, no face, but a, a big voice, uh, Mr. John. He's the one who's asked the questions. Hola. 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 <laughs> uh, oui, oui, monsieur. Oui, oui. And um, any questions you'd like to know about what Manu is cooking tonight? Or alternatively, maybe you might want to know a few things about Manu that, you know, he doesn't tell everybody. Just jump on, say hi, tell us where you're watching from tonight. And let us know what you'd like to know from Manu. What are we cooking, my friend? Let us know, let us know, let us know. And we're still right in place. We've got a Facebook together. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Facebook is good. Instagram glitch every now and then, especially with the sand and so on. So, if you want to... And the image on Facebook is about that way. And then on Instagram is about that way. So, you look... I look, I look yeah, svelte yeah, yeah. and beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, now if, if you have troubles with Instagram, jump on Facebook. You'll have a better experience. And for some reason, my accent on Facebook disappears. Which on Instagram, it just makes it, uh, you know. Um, how many people have we got? What, uh, yeah, we've got, across the audiences, we have a good audience. Across the platforms, we have a good audience. 5,000 people. Watching. Five, at least. Um, <laughs> I think, have you got, an, I mean, a couple of people here from Brisbane. Say hi to, uh, to Laurie. Laurie from Brisbane. Oh, are you swimming there or what's going on? I hope things are good. We've got, we've got yeah. people from, um, from the UK. We've got people from South Australia. But going, um, back to, by going back to Queensland, I just hope, guys, you, you're doing okay over there. I know it's been terrible with the weather and, and the floods and everything, so I hope you guys are okay. Oh, oh I've done a big boo-boo there. Oh, that's a big boo-boo. That's a big boo-boo. So, While you fix your boo-boo, can I ask you a question? <laughs> I didn't say fix up your boo-boo. I said fix your boo-boo. <laughs> now, Laurie. So, I had Laurie. Hi, Laurie. Do uh, all of your sauces have garlic in them? Oh, that's a good question. Obviously, you're allergic to garlic. So I'm going to say yes, there is, unfortunately. But, I mean, you know, when it comes to uh, doing our sauces, we cook them uh, a thousand liters of at the time. So I'm sure the garlic is not really pronounced as much as you would think. Can I just be cheeky and... And we, it's funny, we're, we're talking about your, well, we were talking with some other people today about your sauces, Manu, and yes. they had all these questions like, oh, um, they really couldn't get their head around, well, they could get their head around it, but we had to explain it's a fresh sauce, not a sauce you find in the supermarket aisle. Maybe you can kind of explain that, because I think people go look in this, they look at a Manu sauce, walking down the supermarket aisle, they walk down and they can't, they see everyone else's sauce, Paul Newman's sauce, but not your sauce. Yeah, so... Uh Basically, I've decided to, um, to bring something very different to the Australian market, which is not very different to uh, the European market. But we've got, uh, I've basically created a, a sauce which is a fresh sauce, which means it's made, made with fresh ingredients and it's got no preservative, no additive, and no sugar. Uh, and it's got a basically it stays in the fridge because it's fresh. Uh, so it's not a packet sauce, it's a sauce in a packet. Um, what I'm trying to say is everything that's made here in Australia, uh, it's basically filled into a, a plastic pouch, all the powdered garlic, powdered onions and all flavors and so on. Then it's closed in and then it's cooked in the pouch. 
our sauces, or my sauces, I should say, uh, is actually cooked in a big thousand liter pot, then transfer into a little patch, and then cool down and ready to serve. So that's the difference. And um, it's, you know, it's a real flavors, real ingredients, and a real sauce, basically. No, no crap in it whatsoever. But you say hi to Celeste? Celeste! Is that the Celeste that is famous or just Celeste? Well, I, I don't know if Celeste is famous. Celeste, if you're famous, can you let us know? Um, yeah, no, Celeste not Celeste Barber, Barber tonight. No, oh. we, no we have... Oh. But it's, oh. it, anyway, hi it, Celeste. I assure you that this Celeste is just as important. Now, she says, what shop do we get your sauces from? Okay, so the main shop we get the sauces from now is from Woolies. Uh, the interesting thing is we have been uh, this last year in 766 Woolies. By May this year, we will be in all of them around the country, which means uh, so far we were in uh, New South Wales, Victoria and Queensland. But from May onwards, we'll be in South Australia, uh, Western Australia, and also our little friends, Tasmania. So, and Northern Territory. Uh, what, what, I thought we were there already. Anyway, and Northern Territory. We, we're getting bigger and bigger every year. Um, yeah, so very excited, very excited about this. Um, but yeah, so Woolies is the main store. We've got Delish Deliveries as well, uh, online service, which is fantastic. Uh, if you go to Woolies, though, don't look for the source where the other brands are. We are fresh, so we are in the meat cabinet, the meat section. When you go and get your beef, your chicken, your lamb, your pork, that's where we are. And Catherine, just to fill you in while he takes a break, unfortunately, they're not available in New Zealand yet, but watch this space. Indeed, watch it. We're going to be there soon. We're working on it hard. And what was there again, sir? What are we cooking tonight? So, hey, uh, can, can we talk about food now? I mean, we've got enough people watching. Yeah, we'll watch it, man. Okay. So, I've decided to do a beautiful pan roasted duck breast uh, with salardes potatoes. Salardes potatoes is basically potatoes cooked in duck fat with a bit of shallots, garlic, salt, pepper, and parsley. Um, it's very simple, but very delicious. Um, I know a lot of Aussies have got issues with duck. Uh, and I know that because I used to have a duck takeaway joint. And 50% uh, of you guys feels that duck is not healthy. And I want to prove you wrong because, yes, there's a little bit of fat on the skin. But when you render it while you're cooking it, um, you're left with crispy skin, a beautiful um, meat and it's not fattier than a, a breast of chicken, to be honest with you. So duck is what I'm going to cook for you tonight. And potatoes. So the potatoes um, cook in duck fat. Everyone loves potatoes in duck fat. Everyone. Um, so easy to cook, I believe. Uh, just, it's just about me changing you, your mind on duck. So we've got uh, some duck breast. So you go to your butcher. Uh, get some duck breast and basically you've got a beautiful piece of meat on one side. You've got the skin on the other, which is about half a centimeter thick. Um, but by the time you render it in the pan, uh, you barely got left, nothing left and it's nice and crispy, I promise you. So we're going to start with the potato and we're going to serve that with a, a peppercorn sauce as well. So that's the peppercorn sauce by menu. Also, I'd like to uh, announce something as well that will happen uh, hopefully at the same time as we expanding in Woolies. We're going to change the packaging. And that's very important to let you know because we've had a lot of people and we've listened to you, the customers, that uh, because of the amount of white that's uh, on the packaging, that sometimes you go to Woolies and you look for it and you can't find it. So we've got a brighter packaging coming up soon. Uh, but it's the same product inside, so don't be scared. We're going to have to do a lot of uh, reminder about what's the changes that's going to happen. All right, so uh, let's start with the potatoes. Well, Sultana says hi. Sultana? She's from the Netherlands. Is she and, dry um, and sweet? Or? She said that, well, she said her first comment was, he's so hot. Now, I'm assuming she's talking to you and not Matt, our camera guy. Um, yes. T-Bone, yes. affectionately known as T-Bone. Who is pretty damn hot, 
But um, she also said that duck is just normal cooking for us European people. Yes, so you're right, Sultana. Uh, in Europe, duck is like, you know, okay, so I was thinking about it this morning. Um, chicken for Australian is like the, the prawn of the ocean. And then the lobster is the duck. And not, not a lot of people cook lobster, not a lot of people cook, cook duck. And it's pretty much like this. It's a little bit more expensive, uh, actually a lot more expensive, but it, it's, it's not much different than anything else. It's, it's, it's just about to know how to cook it. But this is something simple people can cook at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so potatoes, um, just peel them early on before we start it. I'm going to cut them into half a centimeter thick. Um, I've got a bit of water here to just to rinse the, the starch. But basically, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook those beautiful slices of potato in. I'm going to put them in cold water. Uh, one thing that a lot of people do is uh, put potatoes in boiling water to start it. And it creates a little skin around it that makes it uh, very difficult to cook. So potato starts in cold water. Basically, the rule is, as a vegetable, whatever grows on the ground is in cold water start. Whatever grows over ground is in boiling water. Oh, so all your green vegetables. All right, so as I say, half a centimeter thick potato. I'm going to put them in a pot. A generous amount of salt um, and I know I've got a lot of potatoes here and I've got four dark breasts it's because every time I do a cooking demonstration I cook for the people that work here so I've got Matt I've got John I've got Nat I've got myself so when we finish this we sit down and we eat what I just cooked so potato sliced half a centimeter thick salt cold water and I'm going to put them on the stove bring them to boil Bring them to boil, and then when it, it boils, then I'm going to take it out of the stove, and I'm going to let them sit there for about 15 minutes, which means they would be pretty much cooked, but still um, firm and crunchy, which means then for uh, the, the next step from that is I'm going to be able to cook them into the dark fat with some shallots, some garlic, sometimes some seasoning, okay? So you ready? All right. I'm going to put a lid on, so when you put a lid on, it, it, it cooks quicker, I suppose. All right, so, duck. You usually take your duck from the butcher or from your shop, and it's got a little bit of excess skin on the side, so I like to, to trim it like this a little bit, all right? Not too much, but I just like to square it off, so when it cooks, I can slice it uh, perfectly, maybe sometimes a bit of that, like this. And don't, please don't throw away the fat. The fat, the skin, that's exactly what you need. So we're going to cook the dark breast, not in olive oil, not in vegetable oil, not in butter. We're going to cook it in its own fat. Because what happens is that skin is the layer of skin and then Below that layer of skin, you've got duck fat. And when you cook the duck fat slowly in a pan, you end up with a beautiful liquid duck fat that cooks your breast, basically. If you know what I'm saying. Uh, now, if you've got any questions whatsoever while I'm cooking, please go ahead. A couple of shout-outs here, Manu. Say hello to Andrea. Andrea, bonsoir. She says, good evening from the lead court... Lead Court Sheep Station. Oh! Grampians area in Victoria. Grampians. I've been to the Grampians a few years ago. We did a little uh, festival there, but f food and wine. That was fantastic. And a question from Amina. Uh, I'm going to say Amina. Amina. Um, she wonders if you've ever cooked Afghan food. No, I, uh, <laughs> Afghan food never. But uh, I'd, I'd love to learn about it. I'd love to have some for sure. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm the type of chef that loves any type of food from anywhere in the world and I'll eat anything. Something that some people says, you know, 
some people eat dogs and some people eat snake and some people eat snails and but if someone eats it somewhere in the world it means it's edible and I'm happy for that okay so um, I've got my trimmed duck breast uh, the next step is I'm going to score the skin with a sharp knife you don't really have to do this if you can't if you don't have a sharp knife and if you can't be bothered uh, it just helps the process of cooking faster so just go across that way and then go across the other way and what happens as well when you crisscross your skin and you seasoning you can put the salt and pepper and it goes right in all right guys feel free to jump on ask any questions about tonight's dish a woman who's cooking or indeed any questions you would love to ask Manu we've got a good one here from Stephanie Steph. Steph. Hello, Steph. She's got the best, I think, the question of the night from Steph so far. Uh, Manu, what wine would you suggest for this dish? Uh, the classic wine to go with, and thank you for the question, uh, is a Pinot Noir usually is the best wine to go with duck. Uh, but again, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a suggestion. You don't really have to go for that. Don't go for something too rich like a, a Shiraz or... Just go maybe for a, maybe a Malbec. Malbec would be nice too, actually. Yes, yes. But uh, pin, uh, usually Pinot Noir is the wine to go with that. So I've crisscross cut with my knife. So it's open a little bit to, um, to the flesh. And I've got some salt. So I'm going to sprinkle salt over the top. And that's going to help to dry the skin a little bit. And also, um, obviously, season it and make the skin really nice and crispy. Okay, the next step from now is usually when you cook a steak, when you cook lamb or pork or chicken, you put your pan on the stove, you put a bit of oil and butter, and then you heat it up before you put your meat in. In this instance, I'm going to put it in a cold pan. And that's the way you cook duck, all right? Uh, and I'm going to put this on a medium heat. And you're going to see that the fat is going to slowly render or melt, as a better adjective for you guys, melt down. And you don't have to add any other fat into this pan to cook the breasts. All right, so that's it. Salt, pepper, both sides. And you're going to put it on the stove that way and just wait a few minutes and you're going to see that all the fat is going to start to render from the skin. Well, there we have um, a great Aussie question, mate. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. How you going? Hey, mate. How you going? Um, we have a question from Josh. He says, hello from a very wet Brisbane. Oh, um, Josh, sorry about that. His question, mate, is this. Um, have you ever used Vegemite in a dish? Uh, great question, Josh. And the question, the answer is yes. Um, I've, I, I was lucky enough to film for Channel 7 a few years ago from the southern state of uh, America. And I went from Miami to Texas. Texas was my last um, destination. And I did a a barbecue competition with Texans. There was 100, 100 entries. And all we had to do is cook a steak. Uh, and basically there was two rounds. The first round is uh, 100 people cooked. Second round there's only 30 people cooked. So I, was, I won my first round by brushing uh, Vegemite on the steak before I put it in the barbecue. And you know the Americans, they look at Marmite or Vegemite, like it's, it's a weird thing, but I understand it and I love it. And it's on a steak, it's just like salt. And it, I, I, so I went through the second round and I, I finished 11 out of 100, so it was pretty good. Here we go. I just, uh, I'm starting to hear uh, my duck singing in the pan. See, I just. There's not much there at the moment, but the, if you can see, there's a little bit of fat rendering from, from the skin so far. 
Manu, so Lester's curious um, if you, you he's obviously checking out the background of your kitchen here and noticing that you have a Thermomix, which I like to call a margarita maker. Um, do you use your Thermomix often? No. It's a beautiful piece of equipment. Uh, but I, I, I used to use it a lot. But not any, it's a great... It's a, listen, if you do vegetable purees, like carrot puree or cauliflower purees or soups, it's an amazing, amazing machine to do with it. But cooking with it, I can't get myself to do it because I, I, I'm just an, an old-fashioned chef. I like to cook on the stove. Well, Clarence certainly appreciates it. Sorry, Clarence. 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 Um, great name. So Clarence says, thank you for sharing your amazing love of food and your passion for cooking, sir. Thank you so much, Clarence. Um, so I've got a bit of shallots and I've got a bit of garlic and that's going to be the next step to my potatoes when, uh, when they decide to, uh, they're just about to come to the boil. From Cyril. Cyril? Yeah, Cyril. G'day, Cyril. Is that, is that like my, my uh, is it a common in, in English, Cyril? The name Cyril? Oh, yeah. Look, I've, I've, I've not met many Cyrils in Australia. Because it's a French I name. I school her dad was Cyril. Yeah, it's a yeah. Cyril the Squirrel. There was a very famous footballer called Cyril. Was that a, was that a cartoon? Is that one? No, not at all. No. Um, anyway. It's, it's called bullying. Um, <laughs> Anyway, what Cyril would like to know is, um, I've got to find Cyril's question now. Here Cyril is. It's about, um, do you cook duck with any fruits in Australia? Yeah, I mean, du duck and fruits are absolutely goes well together. I mean, one of the classic French dishes is duck à l'orange, which is an orange sauce. But duck with peaches, uh, duck with plums, duck with cherry. I lost mine a few years ago, but anyway. Um, I would like to show you, look, look, see, I've done nothing. I've done nothing except putting my duck uh, breast skin side down on a cold pan and on a medium heat. And that fat just comes from the duck skin itself. Which come to let me, let me tell you about the fat renders, the fat goes away. Which means when you've got duck on your plate, you don't have much fat left. So it's a good piece of meat. So don't be worried about duck anymore. The fat is a good thing. So what I do though, what I do though is get rid of the fat as I'm cooking it, all right? And by doing this, I'm saving the fat and that fat is either I'm going to use it with the potatoes tonight, or if I don't use it with the potatoes tonight, I put it in my fridge. And every time I want to cook something, I can use duck fat to cook anything I want. All right? Don't throw it away. So I've got my shallots, and I've got, so potatoes. Potatoes are boiling. Potatoes are boiling. So lids off. And I'm going to leave my potatoes off the, off the fire and I'm going to leave them in there for 15 minutes. So they're not cooked right now. They're still hard, all right, firm. But as I'm going to leave them into the water that is still really hot, it's slowly going to keep on cooking with that. Uh, what happened with the boiling of the potato, if you keep on boiling the potato, they start breaking. To actually bring the potatoes to boil and then take them out of the fire and leave them on the side, they're going to keep on cooking without breaking. And that's what you want. You want a cooked but firm potato so you can saute them in the duck fat later on. All right. Hi. So, Pete's got a question. So I got a Peter. 
Hi, Pip. Pete says, um, what's the secret to finding a great duck? And don't say it's raining. Um, he goes, everyone talks about beef, but not poultry and certainly not duck. So where do you find the best duck, sir? Uh, in New South Wales, there's only two uh, farm, duck, duck farms. Sorry. Um, and the one I, I'd like to use is Pepe's duck. Um, but you, obviously there's other smaller farmers, but you just go to your butcher. And if you don't, your butcher don't have it, they surely can order it for, for you. Um, my butcher is, uh, is uh, Marubra. So we've got uh, Pete, Pete's meat or Peter's meat in Marubra Pacific Square. He's the guy that I use all the time. He's a fantastic man and a great butcher. And if, if, you, if, you're, nice, if you're nice with it to, to him, he's nice with you. And he carries my sauce too, or my sauce range. So he's got all the sauce there. He's got the red wine, he's got the mushroom, he's got the dain, and he's got the peppercorn that we're using tonight. That's the question we had before. What sauce would you pair with the duck? Well, here we go. We, tonight we've got peppercorn sauce. Again, a big classic in a French cooking, serving duck with green peppercorn sauce. This sauce that I've produced is made of green peppercorn and black peppercorn. So it's a little bit more spicier, but still goes very well with the duck. And uh, Jasmine's got a great question. Manu? Uh, Jasmine would like to know. She'd like to know what brand your favorite pots and pans are. What are you using tonight, mate? I'm uh, using, uh, I've got a whole, being a chef, it's very interesting because I get sent a lot of different products. Uh, Scanpan, I don't work with Scanpan, but Scanpan is very good. Um, sorry, I'm just, again, look how much fat I'm pouring of those dark breasts. And look at this. It's starting to crisp. There's still a little bit, a bit to go. But what I'm doing here is I'm cooking the duck mostly on the skin side, all right? And that's the little uh, bit for the chef, the little uh, tenderloin. Mm. Kama says you look much better on Facebook. Oh, thank you, Kama. She... And Margaret says she loves your sauces. Thank you, Margaret. So look at the amount of duck fat I've produced from four duck breast. And this means that you can cook your potatoes in duck fat without buying duck fat. <laughs> Amazing it is. Money saving tips too. Money saving tips too. Who knew? Well, if you're gonna buy the expensive duck breast, <laughs> you can save on buying the duck fat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so into my ducks now because it's getting crispy and beautiful. I'm going to smash a couple of um, garlic cloves in the skin just to flavor that duck fat a little bit. So in, in the middle like this. And I'm going to also put a few sprigs of thyme. I'm going to add a little bit more fat in there so I can get a bit of flavor going on. And look at that. It's getting crispy, but we're not quite there yet. All right. So, you may think that the uh, duck breast is shrinking, but it's not shrinking as such. It's just it just shrinks that way, but then goes bigger that way. So it's not losing a lot of weight. Um, potatoes, duck, the sauce. We're speaking about the sauce. Uh, the only thing you have to do is tear it open, squeeze it in, and I'll show you, you've got this is what they call the piece de resistance. The piece de resistance. But I want to show you because we've got a green peppercorn in it. And what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say, why I'm showing you this is, this sauce is made with real ingredients, no flavor, 
of peppercorn. It's real peppercorns in there, okay? You've got black peppercorns, which is the, the little black spots, and the green peppercorns are whole in there. So when you put this on your steak, on your duck, you get the heat from the black peppercorn and the pop from the, and the freshness of the green peppercorn. All right. Manu, Suzanne is a bit concerned on Instagram. Susan. Suzanne, she's concerned that you are developing an Aussie accent, mate. Mate, listen, Sus. I ain't going love. I, I, I ain't going love. I ain't going right. Uh, listen, I, I, I do try to keep my French accent as much as I can um, because you like it. Um, but sometimes, after living in London for a long time and live, living in Australia for a long time as well, sometimes there's a bit of twang coming out of it. Guys, if you were a few questions tonight asking for the recipe, if you'd like the recipe, jump onto Manu's website or the Buy Manu website, which is Buy Manu, B Y M A N U dot co, <coughs> not dot com, dot co. You hit recipes, it's coming up on your screen now, and you'll find all the recipes Manu cooks at these live cooks, including the duck with the duck fat potatoes. Duck fat salardez. 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 Oui, oui, monsieur. Oui. Did see Donna. Oui. Ditsy Donna. Ditsy. Ditsy Donna. That's Ditsy her name. Donna. I'm not calling her Ditsy. She's calling herself oh. Ditsy. She said, you obviously get tired of cooking occasionally, right? But what's, and what's your favorite takeaway? Oh. Um, I, d I, don't, I, d I don't get bored of cooking, but that I do have the nights where I can't be bothered. You're right. Um, it depends. Um, Spasayam is my favorite Thai in Sydney. Um, we've got Indonesian here, we've got Malaysian here. Uh, I love a pizza, to be honest with you. A couple of beers watching the footy, it's me as well. Um, what else? What else do we order? Uh, burger head. Burger head. My burger head makes those amazing burgers. Actually, we're doing a, another collaboration. We did one last year, we're doing another one this year. So keep your eyes open, eyes and ears open. Uh, coming back to those duck quickly. Crispy skin is happening here. So I've just turned the duck on the flesh side. All right. And you've got that fat here with the flavor of the thyme and garlic. And I wish you could smell it because it smells absolutely delicious. All right, so I'm going to leave this alone for a minute. Now I've got those potatoes and I just want to check if they are cooked enough for me to start. So you see they're still firm, but they're cooked and that's exactly what we want. I've been firm potato, and the only way you can have a cooked and firm potato is that by bringing them to boil out of the of the fire, so they stop boiling, but you keep them in to the hot water, so then you basically end up with a cooked firm potato, and then you're being able to cook them again into the dark fat. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to get rid of the excess water on the cloth. And it, it looks like a bit of work, but you can, you can do that a few hours before dinner if you want to. You don't have to I'm doing this to order because I want to show it to you, but I could have done that earlier on and cool my potatoes down and, uh, and then fry them when I'm ready to uh, have dinner. Guys, question, keep the questions coming. Um, and who's happy to answer, well, the majority of questions you get to ask. If you'd like to know something about tonight's dish, or you would like to know something about Manu's sauce, or just something about the, the man himself, jump on, ask the questions, and I will be asking him on your behalf. So feel free to jump on, guys. Manu, I have a question. Can we go to an ad break? Or you want to go to an ad break? <laughs> sure. Who is, who is sponsoring us tonight? Uh, what, do you, what was the question? 
Um, no, you wanted to go on an ad, an ad break. We're sponsored by... Who are we sponsored by tonight? We, we're, we're sponsored by... Uh, the, the, by the sauce by Manu. Is the sponsor. I said the sauce by Manu. Where's my sauce? So, I want to go back to these ducks quickly before we jump on a potato wagon. I, you, I, I don't know if you realize, but we cooked the duck pretty much all the way through on the skin and then a couple of minutes on the first side and we're gonna rest we're gonna rest those beautiful breasts so you would rest the duck breasts in the same way that you might rest a steak That's that right. most people would indeed why would you do that Manu? um it's really simple let me let me finish my mouth. Um, the simplicity of it is throwing a piece of meat in a hot pan stresses the muscle out and it just kind of concentrates and all the juices are right in there and they can't wait to get out. So if you rest it, you just let those juices just kind of sharing the muscle again. So then when you cut it, you don't have a bleeding of it and you get it something really juicy, really uh, uh, soft and, and tender. All right. All right, so the sauce is boiling. I'm going to put it aside. My potatoes. I'm going to go back on the stove with some duck fat. So these are like twice cooked. What did you call them before? Well, it, they're pretty much cooked, twice cooked indeed, yes. So I'm going to do a bit of shallots. Sala, sala de, Salardaise. Salardaise, which sala. means? It's the translation. It, it, it's where it's from. So in the south of France, that's a typical dish. And basically, I'm going to saute and, and until those potatoes are nice and gold. Put them back on the stove. I'm going to do this in batches, okay? So you're going to have to be patient with me. I'm going straight there. And basically, in duck fat, with a bit of salt and a bit of pepper, of course. In the meantime, I'm going to chop a little bit of the old friend, the parsley, because... There's a lot of people who are getting pretty excited about what's coming out of your oven, my friend. The yeah, uh, you toast, the, 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 a lot of yams. The yams and the who's and the ooh la la. Ooh la la. But if you would like the recipe, guys, um, please jump on the. But go to buymenu.co, not .com, by co, dot co. Go to your recipe section. You'll see tonight's recipe and also all the other recipes that Manu has shared during his on the sorry on the sauce live with Manu. Now, what have we got here? A couple of other questions here. Sarah's got a question. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those potatoes aside for the after crime. Okay. When you guys are done with me, I will go back to those potatoes. I'm just gonna cook enough for you guys. Um, I just want to let you know as well, duck fat, if you do need to buy duck fat, supermarket now sells it in little, uh, little containers of 200 grams. So you can find duck fat in the supermarkets. So don't be scared. Um, the shallots are just caramelization now. Uh, potatoes as well, so I'm going to add a bit of garlic. A letter likes the look of your crust. Excuse me? Our letter says, I love the crust. So do I. Um, and Sarah's got a question, but when you, just when you're ready. She says, when did you have that moment? What was, what was the moment in your life that you knew you wanted to be a chef? Uh, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was funny because if you think, it, I'll tell you about my uh, bringing up and you're going to think, well, uh, of course you were going to become a chef, but I didn't even know I, I was going to be that guy. My, my granddad, 
my great granddad, my granddad, and my dad were all chefs. I never thought of it of as a job. I just knew that I was born in a family that loved food and wine and so on. So I was happy to be born in that family. Um, but then when I got kicked out of school and my parents were divorced, my mom went, what am I going to do with you? And I said, well, I don't know. I said, well, you can go and live with your dad for a year. And my dad owned a restaurant at the time. I, w I walked into the kitchen the first day and it was just an epiphany. It was the hallelujah, kind of like, wow, this, this is exactly what I want to do. And um, that's what I've been doing all my life. Michelle would like to know, when you're at home, do you do the cooking? Or does, uh, does Clarissa do the cooking? What, what's the, how does that work itself out, mate? Michelle, this is a great question. And the answer is, my wife does most of the cooking. <laughs> because my wife is actually an amazing home cook. She's, uh, her background is Malaysian, Chinese, Sri Lankan. And for that reason, she can cook those three cuisines. And she also, after living together for 11 years, uh, started to cook a little bit of uh, the white man's cooking as well. Uh, you know, the European style of cooking. And, and um, yeah, we've got two kids. We've got Jonty, we've got Charlie, we've got me, and, and she loves cooking for all of us. And it's, it's the way that she shows us uh, love, I think. That's the way that the Asians do it. So, uh, yeah, she does the cooking, and I do the washing up sometimes. Sarah's um, really appreciative for sharing the story about becoming a chef, mate. Thank you. Um, what else do we have for you? We've we got lots of questions. Um, Karma, Karma on oh, oh, my apologies for pronouncing your name incorrectly. What salt do you use, sir? Salt. Uh, Holson. Holson salt is what I use. Um, I use also the salt de Guérande, which is the salt from where I come from. So when I go back to France, I buy a few kilos of that Guérande salt, which is, a, which is wet salt, grey. It hasn't been refined. So you, you see those farmers of salt where I live, which is funny because they're just squares of water, basically. And what happens is the, 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 the ocean, ocean tide goes up. And you've got all those little um, water rigs that are going into those swimming pools, I suppose. And then the sun hits those and the salt rises and then they pick up the salt from the top. It's, wow. it's an amazing experience. That's how you get salt. And is that in the south or the north? No, north, yeah, yeah. north, yeah. All right, so I've got my potatoes. I'm getting a little bit of coloring, which I like. I'm going to put a little bit of parsley for uh, color and freshness as well, because I've got shallots and garlic on here. It's, it's a very indulgent uh, but simple dish. Um, I'm going to have a few questions about when MKR is starting, my friend. Oh, so MKR, the, the shooting of MKR is starting in the next couple of months. Uh, so we're still looking for contestants. We're still looking for people who really are passionate cooks. Um, I can promise you this year there won't be any of the maths type of show. Okay, it's going to well, be... Hang on. What does that mean, sir? What do you say maths type of show? The maths type of show is just people arguing and bitching and stabbing each other in the back and throwing glasses of red in the face. We decided to walk away from that, to go back to the basics, go back to food, Lovely. to passion people who love food, love cooking, and that's it. That's it. And I promise you it's not going to happen. I just want to show you something about resting. See, resting, that's what happened. You've got a bit of the juice that comes out of the, the, the meat, and that juice is full of flavor. So you don't have to do that, but I do that, is I put it back in my sauce. All right? Even though the sauce is already amazing, I put it back in my sauce. Uh, extra flavor. All right. And I've just been told you have until the 14th of March to apply to be a consistent and join Manu on My Kitchen Rules. 14th of March is on... Yeah, so, the, so 14th of March is only next week. So you've got about 10 days, okay, to just decide if you want to be on My Kitchen Rules. They're going to be me as the host and judge and someone else or maybe one more, two or three people are going to join me uh, and I've been told that 
I hear it's a big name. It's big names from, from overseas. So come and join us. Go on my bio. Just apply. Even if you change your mind in the next couple of months, apply. Okay? I guarantee they probably got these celebrities on board, Manu, for telling them they were co-hosting with you, right? Yeah, that's right. Everyone from the UK wants to work with me. <laughs> we'll throw in the, the uh, Frenchman and Englishman and see what happens, right? LJ says... What do you think is the best cuisine in the world, chef? Or what are you? What are you? It's hard to nail down, right? So give us, give us your top few. Listen, listen. It. it I, I. I was. Uh, I'm French. I was trained as a French chef. So obviously, French food is something that I know and love the most. Uh, after spending years with my wife, I've got the appreciation and the love of Malaysian and Chinese and and uh, Sri Lankan food. And a Japanese, love Japanese food. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I just, Middle Eastern, I just, I, I just, I want to travel around the world eating food of every kind. So here we go, it's rested, so it doesn't bleed while I'm cooking it. And I've turned the breast on its skin so I can cut straight through. And then what I do is I turn it back on its flesh and you've got beautiful crispy skin. So that looks amazing, mate. I don't know if you can hear my dog, but I've uh, locked my dog in his uh, little uh, room over there and he's whinging because he can smell the food. <laughs> so here we go, you've got beautiful And obviously, a bit of the sauce. And I don't like to pour the sauce on the meat. I like to put the sauce on the side of it, so then you can choose how much or how, lit, uh, how much you want. Or, oops, there you go, like this. So, a little fancy in a restaurant world, I suppose, but a very home way of plating cooking. Um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Um, we've decided to do this cook live once a month and we also decided to do the on the sauce with, with menu once a month. So in two weeks time you've got on the sauce, two weeks later you've got a cooking demonstration and so on. So in two weeks I think we've got a list of people who want to come on the sauce with menu obviously. Um, we've got perhaps Josh uh, Mansour from the Rabbitohs. We've got, uh, who else have we got coming? Like Colin. Colin Fastnich uh, wants to come as well on the sauce. <laughs> I mean, we've been on the sauce with Colin many times, but never filming. Um, but anyway, we've got a whole list of people. So in two weeks time from now, we'll be on the sauce. Two weeks after that, we'll come back with a different recipe. I wish you a good night, a bon appetit, and please just try it. Delicious.